Faith can move mountain. Radio Maria 91.3 FM. The voice of truth. Glad you ready for Usabi. What's that thing? Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> this is how we start today. And we say happy birthday to the birthday girl. Chidera. Chidera. A beautiful Chidera. She's a black beauty in the studio. And a wonderful girl. She yeah. is. Yeah. Today is her birthday. Please help us wish Chidera happy birthday. Yeah. And this is... Um, you know, praying and trusting God that all your heart desires according to the will of God will be granted in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we don't enter the mode of the program and this is the dining room. What thing would they do for this dining room? Every time they go just tell us say we did dining room. Eh? What thing that they cook for this economy when just do like this? <laughs> we still they chop like five square meals. So five mm. or not three. Mm. Now, now we increase them. <laughs> Because the Bible says when there is a casting down, uh, okay, wait till they, they uh, there is a lifting up. Uh -huh. uh -huh. So uh -huh. if you did chop three before, now increase down to five. <laughs> 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 so this is to let you know that nothing is cast on stone, yeah, or yes. cast on iron. So whatever it is or wherever it is, you are, or however you're feeling, we just want to let you know that God still has your back. God is in charge. He's in charge. And he provides in a way that you would never be able to comprehend or imagine. Mm. So do not hurt yourself and do not throw in the towel like they would say, because you're not sure whether it's at that point or that stage of giving up mm. that the help will Me come. Too. But sometimes you will say, why would God wait for me to do this? Yeah, mm. to, for me to cross the line, so to say, or what to cross the line before help comes. It is not God that is pushing you to cross the line. Yeah, it is just the enemy that wants to tempt you to cross the line. If you must give up, just throw in everything on the Holy Spirit. This is the week of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah. Thank throw. Week. Yes. Throw in everything on Him. Just tell Him, Holy Spirit, I know that you're here because God says He will be with me to the end of time. Mm. Yeah. Let the manifestation of your presence be felt in every area. Just say that. Mm. So the dining room is a program that is specially created or the CMO. Catholic Men Organization, CWO, Catholic Women Organization of Abuja and Environ. So are you a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, potential wife, potential husband that is here to enter a home? You're a man, you're a woman, whether you're a mother, you're a father, whether it's your child, this is your program. And you know there'll be time for you to call in. When it's time for you to call in to interact with us, do us the honor of turning down the volume of your set or kindly walk away completely. Hmm, this topic for this week, eh? <laughs> now like the we're, we're flipping the side of the coin yes last week for those who were able to tune in that remember we're talking about um are you a husband or a stressor <laughs> <laughs> stressor means somebody when they give stress mm -hmm. and when we're talking about this stress we are talking about premium <laughs> premium stress the word people premium say premium package, <laughs> <laughs> premium package stress no <laughs> way you know so they get some stress when they the person go the one that say ah, ah, why not just enter become reverse sister? <laughs> why, did I, why did I decide to get married off? Why not just decide, say, I will just serve God all my life? Why are you going to enter this room? But you know, you see the monkey in Nandi, they will tell you that marriage is a beautiful thing. 20 years and still counting. 22 years. Two, two. Yeah. So not be beast, not be popcorn. Exactly. Yeah. So you see him when, or when you, you see him or you hear him talk to you all the time, you hear the laughter, you hear the zeal, you hear the passion. Is it that he's not feeling any? Is it that there are no challenges? Yeah, so it's just how you handle it. You know, God does not like putting away. But you know, there are cases where, you know, we always tell you to shout out, speak out. When it's getting beyond that state that you know that you're going to be broken, yeah? Speak to somebody. So this is the topic we're having today. Are you a wife or a stressor? And we have a very wonderful woman to do justice to this topic today. When it's due time, we're going to introduce her. Mm. But as we always start on this program, this is a time where we bend our heads, open our heart to the working power of the Holy Spirit as we take the prayers. In the name of God the Father, and Son, and of the, Son, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for yet another opportunity for you to go through us and glorify your name. 
We thank you for everyone that has tuned in, that is listening now, and that will listen later. Lord, you alone know that challenge that each and everyone is facing. Some are facing the challenge of not knowing how to come to you, but they truly desire to worship and serve in spirit and in truth. But there are different things. Father, we ask, oh Lord, that whatsoever is pulling them away, give way right now and let them come to you completely without giving back again to the world in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the homes that are at the verge of separation right now because we do not want putting away. Father, let there be wisdom knowledge and understanding that comes from the Holy Spirit alone so that the persons that are involved will be able to handle such in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for those who thought parties are be mainly in their affairs because you say a man and a woman both will leave their parents and they will cling together. Let the third party that is putting asunder in this marriage Leave them alone as we speak right now in the name of Jesus. For those who are having challenges with their children, Father, we ask all that, that for any child that has gone outside your way, that the angel that guides children to come back will bring them back home. Above all, we pray that at the end of our stay here on earth, we will not be found wanting in heaven. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Name of God the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters. This is Dining Room on Radio Madeira 91.3 FM. My name is Brother Nandi Obiechina, and with me in the studio... Eswana Jane Abwedoya. Now, before we start the opening charge, you want to be a strong man. Let me show you how to be a strong married man. One, a strong man is one who forgives and not the one who victimizes. It takes strength to forgive. I will never forgive you once it comes out from your mind. My brother, you are just a weakling. A strong man is strong, powerful, and dynamic outside, just like God can actually, when it has to do with matter with Satan, God is the lion of the tribe of Judea. Yeah. When it has to do with the matter of his family, the church, the children of God, he is soft. He is the lamb of God. If you are so strong at home, you are a weakling. If your wife cannot approach you comfortably and your children approach you comfortably or do things with you and work with you anywhere, my brother, you are very weak. You are intimate. Think you intimidate them by whatever Believe me, you are not intimidating them. You are just showing how stupid you are or how weak you are. Men who are strong love their families. They show affection. Their families can approach them, let them know. They, their daughters and their sons can tell them what they cannot tell anybody outside. If your daughter and your son cannot approach you, then you are weak. Mm. When it has to do with fighting the battle of the destiny for your family. That is where you are expected to be strong. You become a roaring lion. You stand up and roar and the enemies will take off either through prayers or through whatever it is. But they stay away from the destinies of your family. That is where you're strong. If your family are the ones running away from you, you are weak. Mm. Somebody will say, eh, if I show her too much love, and she will, she will not take advantage of me. And then you begin to show her too much hatred. My brother, you are, you are digging a very big grave. I just pray it will not catch up on you. You better change now. Because women double whatever you give them. If you give them seed, they give you children. Give them little money, they provide food for you. Give them love, they will remove their heart and put it in your hands. But if you show them hatred, don't worry. Continue. One day, your hatred, she will become pregnant with hatred. By the time she delivers for you, hmm, you, you will ask God, please come and take me so that I'll go. I don't want to stay again. So I, it, for you to, to, to live long, I want to encourage you, sow the seed of love. And if you do, you are going to reap it. I want to be strong. Please be calm. Be confident. Yes, you need to correct when you need to correct. But please don't be a lion in your home. Be a loving father.
be a loving husband. If you do, not just that you, you feel it in your heart, say it with your mouth and say it with your action. It is at that point that you become strong. Strong men love their families. Thank you. Yeah, you just said that. Use your strength for good. Akbobi, Mozu. Six packs. For those who have six packs. One pack, that one round belly. <laughs> Use it for good. And there's nothing such as uh, too much love. Yeah? There's nothing such as that. Too much love. Yeah? It's better you exhibit or show too much love. You know that you have exhausted everything. Than, you know, you're holding back. You say, I would know if I show her this kind of love now. Because you're only cheating yourself. When you exhaust everything and you show that too much love. Yeah? You know that you're loving just the way Christ said we should love. Yeah, and just like Brother Namdi said, you know, that kind of love alone said, the woman now will become your fighter, mm? spiritually and otherwise. That's when you hear some women say, do anything, but not near my husband. Even if my husband will get more nearer, because of the love and the goodwill the man shows her and the children at home. That's why some women are willing to go beyond and above the call of duty just to be able to cover the man, support the man. And you won't know he's paying the school fee. You won't know who is, uh, you know, and uh, going to the market, you will know whose money, yeah? Went to the market and why the table is being set, yeah? Too much love. So the topic of today, you already know that we say, it, are you a wife or a stressor? Yes, mm. So we have a guest in the house today. Beautiful, wonderful, amazing woman, daughter of Zion. <laughs> and uh, she, she's got a... Colleague, we don't attack today again. Though. The ones that you hear, my learned colleague, when, and I always say, Now, only these people go to school every time I learn it. So, the other ones are unlearned colleague. Way. Okay, I'm going to ask her today again. Too. So, her name is Barista Collette. Ah, and I like the name, the name for like a oh. hey, good chip. Did I pronounce it rightly? Yes, yeah. Guest speaker is Mrs. Barista College, Eguchem. Ma'am, you are welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, Mrs. Barista, our learned or dear learned colleague, you are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> no. hey, so we, we are learned. No, we're still learning. Everyone is. Learning. Why do you people always use that learned colleague? It's also we have already ended and we're still starting. So, so we will continue. Never... No. Okay, please, please continue. Because I go begin the ask some kind questions here. And I know that the other people, when they listen, you know, they wonder, say, not nah, true. Why be saying only there be learning colleague way? Uh uh. Even when somebody risk sweeper in school, mm -hmm. it's not because. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Learning <laughs> colleague way, until I'm able to quote uh, session one, verses one, mission one. At least I know John 3 16. <laughs> That's on a lighter note. So, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, we'll start today. You know, you, you see, the other time somebody called in, I can remember, was saying that, ah, we should balance this thing, you know? mm. eh? We're only talking to the men, talking to the men. Mm -hmm. And you know, somebody who said, you know, how he would go about doing his thing, try to ask the wife, but even with that, if it is, the woman is still not stepping up. So in your words, what is the meaning of a wife? Or who is a wife? Yes. Who can we consider a wife? Wifey. Some people will say wifey. <laughs> Wifey, you Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, that's a beautiful one. Yes, a wife is a woman that has marital relationship with a man okay. whom she calls her spouse or her husband. There are more to this. A wife is one who is a companion to the husband. She is a helper. You know, when God created man, he said it's not good for a man to be left alone. That he's going to create a helper for the man. So she is a helper. She is a companion. She is one that stays by the man to support him in all he does. And while the union is blessed with children, she now plays other roles, like a mother, and then she takes care of her home, 
in fact, the duties of a wife cannot be overemphasized because as a woman, she knows what she has to do as a righteous woman, like the Bible has said it in the book of Proverbs, she has to wake early to take care of her home, to make breakfast even while they are still sleeping. But the role of a wife is forced to be a prayerful woman. You have to be a prayerful woman because as soon as you're married, from the onset, you have to create that tradition or the culture where once you wake up, the first thing you do with your husband is to pray. So you have to lay the foundation of your home as a prayerful home, inviting God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to come and be with you, the Holy Spirit to direct you, seeking the intercession of our blessed Mother Mary to also intercede for you because we are not perfect. And because you're just going into marriage, you need God. You need our blessed Mother Mary to come and help you so that your home will be a perfect one. Mm. Thank you. That's, that's, that's really a lot. That resonates. And, and you know, you know, the last uh, word is um, you, you invite her mother Mary to be with you. In, in, when mother Mary is invited in any marriage, if, if their wine ever runs out, she, she pleads with right. the Lord to please supply the wine. Yes, yes. That means when you invite mother Mary, invite Jesus in your wife, and you invite the mother and to be your mother in that your marriage, the, the, the promise is that you will not lack wine. Yes. in that marriage that beauty of that marriage will always remain thank you thank, thank you. you all right so that takes us to the next question because you already said that a wife is someone that has a marital relationship yeah with a man yeah woman yes. to man with a man yeah so now where does the culture of marriage come from is a two-in-one question and what would you say or where is the ideal culture for marriage? Because we hear some persons say, Esokwa. <laughs> Did I get it right? <laughs> Which one like, God forbid. Okay. Esokwa. <laughs> <laughs> These people go, go flog me today. I say, what kind of language are you speaking? Your pastor, that's your language. No, the one they will say, Esokwa now. Like, okay. God forbid. Mm. Did I, am I saying it well? No, you're not saying it. Well. At least you understand what I mean. I don't understand. You know like, God forbid. To fear one. 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 They will say, mm, over their living bodies. Mm. Yes. Their son will not go there. Mm. Their daughter will not go there. Mm. Is it not those people that they were using as sacrifice or as slaves in the shrine and all that? Mm. The ones they call Osu. Oh, my God. And the Bible will say, no longer Jews or Gentiles are mm -hmm. the baptism, in the blood of Christ and the water. And all. But you still find this one now existing. Yeah, yes. existing. Yes. So which one would you say is the idea? Because in every culture, there is a pocket of here and there mm -hmm. that would make people say, I'm not good here. I'm not supposed to go there. So are there some cultures that are left out of this that we say to you to be the ideal culture? And where does that thing of marriage come from? Where did it come from, marriage? The culture of marriage and what is the ideal culture to get married into? Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. As you are all aware, you know, marriage dates back as far as 4,000 years ago, B.C., before okay. the birth of Christ. Yes. Oh, 4,000. Yes. The, the history has it that the first marriage was in Mesopotamia. And oh. thereafter, the Roman Empire... Greece and all that. But you know, at that time, even the Egyptians, at that time, marriage was not founded on love and religion. Marriage okay. was founded on power. You see, that's why at that time you see some kings trying to look for other countries or empires that are stronger than them so that they will betroth their children to the children of those countries. And the reason is to form alliance so that in case if any other country was to wage war with them, oh. they will have a very strong force. So mm. at that time, that was the basic reason for marriage. And another mm. thing is for inheritance. Okay. Who is going to take over me after I'm gone, you know? 
okay, these people, their country, oh, they are very strong. I won't be scared that they overthrow my son and all that. So they are going to support my son. So these are how it was at that time. But for us now, marriage is basically founded on love. Okay. And we have to imbibe the practices of the church. But before then, you know, traditionally, before one settles in marriage, you have to first take whomever you want to get married to, to your parents. That's the first step. And thereafter, if they accept this, you now call the larger community. And that's where traditional marriages come mm -hmm. in. And thereafter, after the traditional marriage, yes, we have marriage of two different faiths, cultures, and all that. But notwithstanding, once parents sanctions that you can go ahead, there's no problem with that because you now have their support. The problem only comes when they do not support you. So what do you do in the circumstance? That's where you see some children, some will even run away hmm. with their <laughs> loved yeah, ones. Elope, yeah, they call it. I elope with them to a different country where they will stay. And those practices are not too good. Hmm. We have had a story of um, someone or couple or lovebirds hmm. who did that. And at the end of the day, only for them to find out that they were related in a way. And because they are related, they can't get married. Mm. There are some cultures, yes, they even go to look out for their cousins to get married to them. But in some cultures, these are taboos. Mm. So because they will say our ancestors, when you get married, mm. to you you give back to um, a children, an imbecile, all sorts of stories. Mm. And because of that, when they learned this, they had to come back home. And their parents were like, come, we're going to wed you. Yes, but come. The tradition is that we're going to kill a cow to severe whatever unforeseen circumstances this marriage you people have had. But this particular couple, they have really had two children, and all the children were doing well. Mm -hmm. You understand? So what am I trying to say? Now, in Nigeria, for instance, if you have to get married, Yes, after the traditional, like in the Catholic Church, then you start your marriage course. After the marriage course, then you get wedded in the church. But now we're also talking about marriage under the Act. The church encourages this now. No matter what your culture is, no matter what the tradition is, you have to get married under the Act by going to the state registry to ensure that yourself and your spouse are married there before even now before the church marriage in some instances sometimes after the church marriage so that's it. so yeah so just to I, I understand that bit where you say okay because um some tradition okay people you not know, related of course we know that that should even come to play but how about this is not the case of people being related you just hear because of something that has happened in the past. You say they cannot marry. I know of a woman that that thing, or oh, yeah, I will call her a woman that's as affected. She's way into her sixties right now. She's still not married. They said their place they were also, and even the the king of the town had even abolished it at some point. Do you know when the man, uh, the first person she was to get married to, after everything was arranged, a very friend betrayed her. I went and told that one that, oh, don't go there, don't go there, it's also, also, you know, like that. Yes. Yeah, that one left. Then after some years, this was like, okay, five years ago, this after like 10, 15 years, some other person came and, you know, she told the person, this is, he said, okay, I, I'm a Christian, it's no problem and all that. So the day he was going for um the, the knock, they say knocking at the door, they just got to replace and they missed their way just for them to now ask, Somebody then now came and said, uh -uh, which place did you say you're going to? We know that they're not the near those people. This was a guy that, was, that already said, ah, you are my everything, potato and everything. Do you know that guy turned back? From that day. From that day. Yes. So when, how, how do you speak to that? Because there are persons that are listening right now. And I know of somebody, a Catholic, a woman. 
very influential in this mother Mary things. One of her daughters that is yet to be married now, she was in a relationship, but they said the man was also, but lovely man, everything. So she just thought to ask the mother, oh mom, what would you do if I bring, he said if I hear it in this house. Yes. And that was it. Now, now the, the, we need to understand the, the place of a, okay, uh, let me also add before we yeah. take get to that yeah. place. Eh? Let me also add that then may it, it's possible that the first marriage was uh, conducted about four thousand years ago. Yeah. And so, but 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 um, the first marriage, if you go through the scriptures, you find out that took place oh. in the garden of Eden. Okay. Yes. Yeah. After uh, um, Adam was created, he had everything around, but no. he couldn't find. A companion. Yeah. By the time he saw the woman, he became emergency prophet. Mm. Oh, this is the bone <laughs> of my bone and the flesh <laughs> of my flesh. And it shall be called woman. woman. Because he was taken from who told him? He became uh, a, an emergency prophet. That was a, it's only a woman that can make a man a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> Whether but, he knows what he's yes, prophesying yes. or not. So, so from there, and the Lord gave her to add and bless them yeah. so that blessing actually it's actually what we see as the first marriage maybe if, if the marriage started from the bible the physical one yeah. can you know may, yeah. maybe the traditional uh, marriage mm. uh, may have started four thousand years ago but the but the yeah. main marriage biblical marriage in fact it is in the bible that the marriage uh, actually started now coming to the osu i actually feel very very bad for 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 people some yeah. so many years ago there was a particular young man who who used to be a very good um prayerful person he was even mm. in in a, a, a very spiritual person mm. all of a sudden he was about to get married and he sent a message um okay the lady mm. that he wanted to get married to sent a message and his people went to find out whether He's from he's an Osu. So, and the person they, they went to see to uh, inquire ended up telling the young man that they came to inquire whether you are an Osu. That one said that lady that lady is not prepared to be, in fact, he's not he's not mm. fit to be a wife. And mm. they 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 discussed, plead, and never the man mm. abandoned. He said yeah. He say he's not a mature Christian. Yes. If he should be asking for one, is it uh, no. so at the point yes. where you have grown up spiritually mm -hmm. and then and then ended up not getting married to the lady, even after the lady pleaded and pleaded and pleaded, even though he himself was was in the wrong, he should not even get. If you're mature spiritually, you should yeah, not. That's so that. Some of those things happened in the southeast, uh, especially. But if you check the history behind Osu, mm -hmm. you find out that almost everybody who has a family come from uh, one power or one deity, from their yeah. forefathers and all that, that these people came together I mean, because of um, one, one problem or the other, run to a particular deity and okay. say, become our... Uh, uh, this our protector. Yes, yeah, so protector. So they hand themselves over to that by a covenant. Okay. Now, so that the enemies will not eliminate them. Mm -hmm. in the land so now it, 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 it was like it was like okay if you touch them the spirit will come after you that was they were seeking for protection mm -hmm. and then there is no family in those days that did not have one god mm -hmm. or another mm -hmm. they were serving before the church came mm -hmm. so if you follow it almost everybody will be in one or, two or, 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 or the other but like, like recently in my hometown there was there was a, a, a program done, you know, where is the color in Orumba South local government of Anambra State, my hometown, where the the whole town came together and then they decided to abolish the Osu yeah. caste system because it is actually injustice. The mm -hmm. people you call us, so many of them are, are more Christian, are better Christian than you. Than others. And then, and then they are, Christ has died on the cross of Calvary and then he has set everybody free. There is no longer a slave. No Jew, or no a Gentile. master, no Jew, no Gentile. So Christ is one, and Christ has redeemed everybody. So it, that Osu caste system is evil, is wicked, and should not be associated with any person who calls himself a child of God or a Christian. If you if you still operate Osu caste system, you are better go and do something about it. Good and uh, forward-thinking men and women go out there 
and they and they go ahead to abolish such things. They come in. They, how our people did it? They brought all the men of God around mm -hmm. our, our place, brought uh, Reverend Fathers and all of that, and they came. Instead, these people were 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 brought into Osukasin by activities of a native doctor. Mm -hmm. Now, now the priests, the priests, mm -hmm. and, and the men of God are now the ones who who represent Christ on earth. Yeah. So let them stand in. On, on uh, and then cancel such a yeah. system, and they, they declare it and cancel it, and they enter into through prayers, and then did mass at the end of the mass became like the sacrifice which people mm, used to do in those days, Christ. and all that. Jesus now is shed on the, uh, uh, at, the uh, at the at the altar. By the time the prayer was over, Osuka system was abolished, and everybody become became free. Oh. So now, if if anybody has not done, if they are still doing it in your village or in your hometown. And you are listening to us. Please go and talk to people who understand, who are forward thinking. Sooner or later, you can organize men of God. They will come down to your village and abolish the system because it's injustice, it's wicked, it's evil. Please don't join them. Thank you. Yeah, right. yeah, that was a lot, a lot, a lot. I just needed um, light, more light to be thrown on that. Thank you so much, sir. So we continue with you. Uh, Madam Barista Lene Kolikwe. <laughs> <laughs> what are the characteristics? <laughs> <friend. laughs> I don't be shy. What are the characteristics of a good wife? Yes, of a good, godly Christian wife. They say plenty there. Good, plenty. godly Christian wife. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. The characteristics of a good, godly Christian, Christian wife. wife. Because the person can be good is not good, it can be good. Yes. Yes. Now make we join everything. Everything as one. <laughs> yes. Firstly, you must know God. How do you know God? Like some denominations we say you must be born again. Okay. But knowing God is making your Bible your companion. Okay. Attending mass because that's where you hear the word of God. Trying to bring up your children, especially your husband, because in most cases you see that most women, for them going to church, mass, and all that is not a problem. So you have to carry your family along. Make sure that you're going to daily masses, not just you and say, oh, I'm leaving you, I'm going, you leave. No. Call upon your husband. Sweetheart is already half past five. Mass is six. Or your children. By the time you invite this politics, you see that your children will not even derail from it as it were. Secondly, you must be God fearing. How do you fear God? Before you do anything, you have to ask yourself, oh, what I'm going to do? Is it going to please God? Mm. Would my neighbors be happy if the coin is turned around and someone have to do this to me? Will I be happy? You have to fear God. Then, thirdly, as a godly wife and mother, you have to be sure that you spend wisely. You don't need to be extravagant. Even if the money is Even there. Even if the money is there. Mm -hmm. Don't go and start spreading, uh, spending unnecessarily because you have a wealthy husband. Instead, soft you can, life. Yeah. We call it soft life. Yes, so soft life. Instead, if you think you have money in excess, you can call upon your husband. Please, in the church, we have servicing the poor. Since we have excess, mm -hmm. can we buy some bags of rice for Christmas, mm -hmm. Easter? Can we have lists for those who are in need? You can even do this anonymously. You can even discuss with your husband and try to invest mm -hmm. for the future because nobody knows tomorrow. The way the economy is going, you may have so much money today, before you know it, the coin will turn the other way. Mm -hmm. And then you see yourself looking for where to get money. Then, fourthly, you should live a life that is worthy of emulation. A life that when people see you, they say, ah, no, this woman, she's a godly woman. 
she's a child of God. Every time in church, you see her, she comes with her children on Saturdays, even without being called upon, they're cleaning the church. In social so, so societies, they're always there. In a place of work, because it's not only in church, in your place of work, your relationship with your colleagues, wherever you go. My uncle once told me that prayer is not only while you go to church and you pray, making noise, disturbing God all the time. <laughs> and then on your way, if you see a nail that will puncture someone's tire and you leave it and cross mm. over, that you come down, pick it, remove it, because the next person coming may not see that nail. Mm. That is what he told me he believed that is part of Christianity and is uh, Christ life. So, apart from all this, you also try in the community where you are, what do people say about you? Mm. What impression do you create? Do they say negative things about you? Do they say positive things about you? The people, people conclude about you before you say anything. Yeah, no, we know what she's going to do about this. Or they say, please, please, no, no, please. She's the Esther of our time. Mm. She's the Sarah of our time. She's Let's the Dorcas. She's the Dorcas of our time. Mm. Let's go to her. If you just go to her, in fact, this problem we have now is half solved. Mm. Do you call upon your fellow women and say, sisters, let us pray for our country. Let us pray for our priests. Are you always in the forefront of, of, of affairs that concerns God? Do you make your home a foundation like that of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph? How do you interact? Are you submissive to your husband? Charity begins at home. Are you submissive to me? Are you a nagging wife? Or before she say, your husband says one, you say 20. So all these are things that you have to imbibe. So that when you go out, when people see you, they will know you're godly. They will know you're a good wife. If they want to talk of James, they'll say, no, no, ah, the wife, the man doesn't have problem. The woman need to give and stress. Oh. I see the one that every day, I beg, I don't want to come home. Mm. <laughs> Even your children. I don't. Even your children. Will be before home. they will speak to you, they will say, let's rehearse. You. <laughs> we know what to say. People will not set them on edge. Yeah. 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 So, the, 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 the um, quality, yeah, and the characteristics of a, a, a good wife is basically what people, not what you think about yourself, yeah. but what others see in you what they say about you and how you react. Are you are your temperament one that when someone even wants to correct you, you should be able to accept faults. There's no one who is perfect mm. and then try to learn. Try as much as possible to say, I'm sorry. Even before they will finish, oh, sorry, please, sorry, please. It will not repeat itself. Mm. Or are you one that wants to stand your ground? Even when they're dying, you say, I'm not shifting. No, this is me. <laughs> At, at, at this at this point, I'm not shifting. This is me. Yes. At this point, we are going to open the phone lines so that the, uh, others can uh, communicate with us. 081-084-47518. 081-084-47518. You need to be civil. You, you need to observe courtesy and some sense of civility as a good wife ability to say sorry when you are so, when you have um, wronged, wronged someone, someone even your child you know and then ability to um, say thank you when someone has done something for you do you know that even your children will look forward to hearing thank you from mommy thank you from daddy and all that Oh, sorry, when you are wrong. And you, you might think you are bringing yourself that a typical, a typical a village man might think, um, I, 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 I don't say sorry. If you say sorry, uh, instead they will go and buy, they will go and buy suya and bring for you just to say sorry. So don't buy suya. Just tell the person, I am sorry. I'm sorry. By the time you, by the time you say I'm sorry, your wife, your son, your children or your your children will know that my my dad is 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 a civilized no, no, person. Wife, no, wife, my wife, wife, my mother is a yeah. civilized person. My wife is a very civilized 
woman because she's such that if she does anything wrong, she, she apologizes. And it, it, it builds respect. It does not remove it at all. Yeah. Thank you. We're still waiting for your call. 08104475518. Are you a wife or a stressor? And if you're a man calling, let us know what you feel to add to what um, our guest has already said, qualities of the qualities or characteristics of a good wife. So the next question will be, as we're waiting for the call, are there benefits of being a good wife and mother? Wow. Any benefits? Sorry, we'll have a call. Hello, good evening. Yeah, hello. Hello, good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, this is uh, Mr. O calling from Osako Market. Okay, Mr. O, let's hear your contribution. Okay, um, to the program anyway, I'm trying to play other music. Well, the program seems very interesting, so I have to listen till now. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, anyway, I will say myself, um, anyway, I, I, Google, I Google this different times. Mm -hmm. Why am I always upset, you know? Mm -hmm. so, why am I always upset, like, uh, you know, being around someone, uh, the person trying everything to make you happy, you continue finding one fault or the other, I don't know, it's maybe my lifestyle or maybe places I've been, you know, um, being in some classes of life, at the end of at the end of it, you're meeting with people who maybe not in the, you know, the level you've been to, or maybe this is the person you like because you can like someone and, you know, try to get to know the person and if you can together like that anyway so i will not take much of your time so anyway i'm trying to work on myself so i feel like uh, uh the program uh when you guys have talked about it yeah i will see reason to calm down you know to actually see other people like me you know but no one is perfect myself i don't really say sorry because i asked my girl one time if they are don't say sorry, then I ask them. So, um, have you been anything that I did that I supposed to say sorry? Then she laughed. I said, but you don't tell me. So I don't know, but it's always um. for this or that. So anyway, I will stop here. I want to appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. Mm. Okay. Thank uh -huh. you. Thank you right. so very right. much. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Mr. O from Utoko Market. Very mm. valid point. And, and this is what, why we always come here, that whatever we say that is in line with what God wants us to say, that you mm. out there take action. Mm. So thank you for that, um, your willingness to take action, to change. Exactly. Yeah? Yeah. And, and start coming down and start treating other people as yourself, yeah? Mm -hmm. That you would have that listening ear to know whether to say sorry or not. Do, do, you, know, do you know that a man like this yeah. is such, um, such a man that you can, you can attest to having wisdom? Yeah. Uh, someone who knows even his weaknesses mm. and limitations and is, willing. And, he, and is willing to make a change is a wise man. Very, very wise man. If you're listening to us, in case you need uh, a little more help, you can send us a text message. You can talk yeah. outside, outside the yeah. studio and, and all that. You are a wise man and God will bless you for making efforts. Amen. Amen. Yes. We're still expecting your call, 087518. Now, continue the benefits. benefits of being a good woman. Yes. First, the first benefit of being a good wife is fruitfulness. 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 Yeah. Hello, good evening. Uh, good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah, my name is Samuel. I'm calling from Bay Bay. Okay, okay, Mr. Samuel. Um, I enjoy the program. It's very nice. So God bless you guys in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, I understand what you are saying. To be say sorry is very, very important to everybody because when you say sorry, it's yeah, it heals so many wounds. 
when you are at fault, you only tell someone that sorry, even when you are not at fault, but to allow this to rain, you mm. just say, I'm sorry. And when you say sorry, you do will just pass it. We are very nice goes up. So I'm interested in the program. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sam. God bless you. We have we have very wonderful guys uh, listening. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I said fruitfulness. Yes. Mm. Nobody who works or who abides mm. by the ways of the Lord that will not be fruitful in all she does as a wife mm. and a mother. Because before she does anything, she seeks the face of the Lord. Mm. So there are lots of benefits. For you to be a godly wife and a good mother, you don't have to regret it. Because you know sometimes people will say this one as will be fulu fulu. Mm. Anywhere the husband <laughs> Yes, but you have peace of mind. Exactly. You are happy. Mm. There's love in your home. Yes. There's peace in your home. There's understanding. Your children are looking up to you because they have seen how mommy and daddy behaves at home. You can beat your chest and say no. In their own homes, at the time they will get married, they want their home to be like ours. Yes. So that is why you have to lay that proper foundation. And that is why I say fruitfulness. Because you're going to yield good fruits. And these are fruits we yield because we are godly and a good wife. So, apart from that, the benefit is the spirit of perseverance. You now see that some things that ordinarily will provoke you because you have decided you're going to persevere in this. You see yourself turning everything around for good. Even when the going is tough, you say, yes, I'm tough. I have to get going. Mm -hmm. I will not relent. Even where there is no money on the table, you say, let's make do with what we have. You go back to your garden, to the vegetable. You tell your children, oh, when we were young, we used to eat this. So daddy and mom, to the grand grandma and grandpa, today, mm -hmm. let's try it. They won't even understand what's going on in the home. You go behind them, even when you don't have the money, before your husband will start getting worried, where do you get this? You go behind him, go to his home, make the principal of wherever, and say, please respect us on court. In case my husband comes after now, just tell him, don't worry. I know what the situation is. You can do this, please. Thanks to his tone. Why? You don't want your husband to be overburdened by some troubles and all that. What are you trying to chase away? High blood pressure. Stress. Hold on, ma. You just say something that 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 a, that cannot come from a mind that is not regenerated. That a something that is meant to be a problem for your husband, and you go ahead to plead, please allow there is something so that my husband does not get. Do you know that so many women? are the reasons their husbands die. And let's, sorry, let me say it. Mm. Now, because when you become a stressor, mm. when you become a stressor, no good at all. the man will think and think and think, sometimes high blood pressure mm. will bring him down. But what you just said now, when you see something that is going to bring down, you know, oh, cause uh, uh, yeah. uh, blood pressure, you will go ahead pain. and try to handle it. Yeah. And encourage that such thing does not happen. That's a sign. Yeah, we we'll take our last call for today. Hello. Okay. Okay. So, so you, you go ahead, handle it. You know, you 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 come in and you tell the man, hold on, don't worry, we can handle it. We we'll always find solution to it. Mm -hmm. And the man, the man is at peace. He feels, you know, you know, he has not got something that is going to help the family, but all of a sudden. You're making him to feel comfortable and be at home. Yeah. Hello. 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 Good evening, sir. Good evening, brother. How are you? Fine, thank you. Brother, my name is Brother E. Okay, brother. Yes, I beg you. This is the biggest happy bringing back again. 
Today we had we had well, this. We, um, we have um, a, a message. Okay. Yeah, but I know that. But we just just so that uh, you don't feel offended. Yeah, you are saying that you are thanking God for adding another year to your elder brother, right? Yeah, and it was yesterday. Yeah, but we got your other message. We are going to follow up. So, congratulations to your elder brother. Okay. All right, and um, haven't said that we balanced this like last last week we talked about uh we centered on men. on men on men and then today we're centering on women and talking about that. So if you follow us every Saturday, you will see what is happening. We we try to extract things. Mm -hmm. But uh, like you said, a time is coming when we're going to bring the men, bring the women together and yeah. then we're we're discussing the matter. Haven't said that their brothers and sisters at this point. Um, have we have not really exhausted because we have mm. so much. Our guest uh, in the studio has so much to give to us, um, but but there there is no so much time on us on our side. So at this point, we want to appreciate you, Ma, Thank you very much for coming. Yes, it's, it's been really wonderful having you here. Really Thank you Thank very you. much. Our appreciation goes to the CWO. Uh, uh, President, President yes. Chief Mrs. Yes. Ebere Okoye, yes. mm. and then Mrs. Agwai, yes, and then Mrs. Frances Agwai, and then um, there yeah, the President of uh, CMO, Sir Samson Haruna, Aruna. a wonderful gentleman. Very, and now you know. I don't know. Okay, uh, August Ogaruna, I know you are listening now. Eh, you have been unfair mm. every time you go call for CMO, but you have been called for. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I had to do this ah. because I was expecting to hear his call. Okay, okay. You know he's how much he loves expect, me to call. Expecting his call. Don't worry, <laughs> don't worry. We hear his call. Having said this, we want to appreciate our the birthday girl, Chidera. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad I'm I'm appreci I appreciate. Uh, appreciation to go to Father Sly, Loloma, and Sashi. all the radio Maria crew. God bless you. Thank 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 you.